Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for Florida Climate Week. My name is Dawn Sheriffs, and I'm the Florida Director for the Environmental Defense Fund. I'm excited today to have a conversation with Florida's Lieutenant Governor Jeanette Nunez here at our alma mater, Florida International University. For those of you who don't know, the Lieutenant Governor was a uh, representative for eight years representing uh, communities in Miami and now gets to serve statewide in her role as Lieutenant Governor. So welcome, Lieutenant Governor. So excited to have you. Thank you, Don. It's great to be here with you to be able to talk about this really important topic. You know, it is a, a common thing that Florida gets put on the headlines and stories of climate change, but I know firsthand uh, how much great work is being done. So I'd love to just get your perspective on what you see as the biggest challenges um, from a change in climate. Absolutely, and, and I think that that's something that this governor, um, Governor Ron DeSantis, has been really focused on since day one. Um, when you look at what we've been able to accomplish in just a short period of time, I think it's really impressive. And, and not only is it something that we've focused on because it was a campaign promise, but because it's the right thing to do. So we're not just inheriting this wonderful planet from our, from our parents, we're borrowing it from our children. And so as a mom of three, as you mentioned earlier, it's something that's really important for me personally and also as a policymaker. And so what we've done um, since day one is really focus on investing in important issues related to the environment. And I think what you've seen is record historic funding on the environmental front. And that's something that, again, we're really proud of. We understand mm -hmm. there's a lot of work to do. Florida's economy is inextricably linked with our environment. And so, again, it is incumbent upon us, those are in positions of power, those that are in positions of making decisions um, to work with all of our partners, regional, um, state, local, federal, to ensure that we are appropriately funding the, the infrastructure projects we need to, that we're looking at it from a global holistic standpoint and, and really putting the emphasis on where it needs to be and that's addressing this very important issue. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more and I think, you know, you've been a long champion of health um, we have, you know, those concerns as well. Are there particular um, opportunities to create protections to protect uh, agriculture, tourism, and other parts of our economy? Yeah, and again, I think that those aspects of our economy, multifaceted, but all very much so linked. And so we want to make sure that decisions we're making, um, that they have a, a really comprehensive look to them. So what we've done in previous budgets and in this budget as well, in our Florida LEADS budget, is invest in our future. And how do we do that? We have uh, committed to investing a billion dollars uh, for all types of environmental projects. But in addition, I'm really looking at opportunities to focus on issues and focus on what are what are the pieces that we need to put together and so that's something again really important what are the regional strategic assets that we need to be investing in and uh, Florida obviously with so much coastline uh, is no stranger to flooding and obviously intensifying storms you know making sure that we're hardening our coastline uh, making sure that we're addressing issues related to sea level rise and and so all of it together it, it's it sounds daunting when you start to look at what are the things you need to to do? How do you work with your legislative partners? How do you work with DC? How do you ensure that our, our local partners are also at the table? Yeah. And so it's, it's a daunting task, but I really do think that given the implications for our future, given the implications for Florida's economy moving forward, um, that we have to continue to invest in it. And again, I think that's something that this governor has been very clear on. Um, we've focused on bringing the right people to the table. Uh, obviously, the Florida Department of Environmental Protection is sort of the lead on this, uh, but the governor has also, first of its kind ever in the history of the state of Florida, uh, our chief science officer. And so that's something we're, we're proud to announce just uh, just a few days ago, our second chief science officer. And, and so we, we hope to continue to work with those types of individuals that are really cutting edge subject matter experts to continue to help us to pave the way forward. Yeah, and, and, and we love that. I mean, I think having a, a comprehensive and science-based plan has put states like Louisiana at an advantage for federal money, not just for resilience investments, which are well needed, uh, but even increased capacity for disaster resistance. This mm -hmm. is Florida, hurricane yes. season's looming, right? <laughs> it is. Um, you know, how do we, we start to think about that? Do you see Florida moving forward, uh, some sort of a comprehensive plan in the coming years? 
I think Florida has been really proactive under this governor. And, and I think to your point, um, some states have really figured out what are the things you need to do at the state level to be able to leverage and capitalize at the federal level. And so um, all of those things are, are critically important. The, the chief science officer, we, um, the governor under his executive order created the Office of Resilience and Coastal Protection under the Department of Environmental Protection, looking at you know making vulnerability assessments, making sure that we are identifying both coastal and inland counties. Um, you mentioned Florida, obviously we're on the cusp of hurricane season, a little under two months, and that has huge implications from a disaster um, management standpoint, and obviously from what are the things that we need to do today to ensure that we're protecting certain areas, certain coastal counties, um, and even inland counties. And so all of those things, I think, um, together with the governor's focus, I think will really lend itself well to being able to address issues at the federal level. And if you look at our program, Resilience Florida, um, I think that one of the things that we're really excited about is those stimulus dollars that are flowing to states throughout the country. Um, the governor has indicated his support for uh, providing additional dollars, an additional billion dollars under stimulus um, to be able to capitalize on that funding stream. Of course, the legislature has the appropriations authority, and so we, we hope that we'll be able to get some support. We've already seen the Speaker of the House. Uh, Chris Browles uh, come out in support of identifying some funding for for obviously coastal communities and, and making sure that we're protecting our our coastal communities. That's something I think that we have consensus and buy-in. But of course, it's it's a long haul from here to the end of session when they finalize the budget, and hopefully we'll we'll see again record funding, something that we're really proud of. Historic funding in the history of the state of Florida, we've never invested this much money, and I think that that's obviously something that we're going to continue to push on and, and impress upon those that are involved in the decision making. Yeah, no, that's very exciting. And in fact, Florida was one of the you know, lead states to move uh, Volkswagen settlement dollars into uh, electric vehicle infrastructure. I would love to, to talk a little bit about that. I know we've had a great grant program that was started. Mm -hmm. And here in Miami-Dade County, you have the um, school bus fleets being converted. would love to hear uh, how we can get more municipal fleets or more local governments empowered to make some of those changes. We were really excited to, to make that announcement last year, right sort of at the beginning of COVID. Everything was um, just in a really, really challenging point, right, in, in the pandemic. And so the governor made the announcement about the investment over $8.6 million in uh, electric vehicle charging stations all throughout, uh, all throughout areas and corridors where there's a lot of vehicles traveling. And so we are, I think, number two right now in terms of uh, number of Floridians that own electric vehicles. And, and we hope to continue to go down that path. And so I think it's important, again, to focus on um, what are the trends. And we know that electric vehicles have really skyrocketed in the past couple of years, and Florida continues to to show that we're uh, that, that Floridians are making environmentally conscious decisions as it relates to their their mode of transportation. And so um, that, coupled with what you mentioned, the electric buses, I know not just Miami-Dade, but other counties, Broward, Manatee, other counties are also availing themselves of that program. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're going to be able to continue to see those dollars flow to communities that are putting mm -hmm. the emphasis where it needs to be in reducing emissions, making sure that they're um, providing opportunities to, for those that do have electric vehicles, you know, I, I have a friend that um, obviously would, would complain about the lack of charging stations <laughs> and was really excited when the governor made this announcement. And, and so I think those are really important steps. And I think they lay the foundation for future growth in that area because I, I believe strongly that there'll come a point where we'll have critical mass as it relates to electric vehicles. You're absolutely right. In fact, we did a poll uh, in Florida and just a couple weeks ago, and it said that 43% of Floridians are planning to purchase an EV. So we've got a a bunch of infrastructure, but you know, I can yeah. tell you, having done you know hurricane prep on my own, you know, gas stations are usually the first thing to to shut down, and it's really great for our evacuation purposes and for rebounding from storms to have all that infrastructure in place. Absolutely, I actually was in the Florida House of Representatives prior to this current mm -hmm. rule, and was there right around during uh, Hurricane Irma. And as you know, six million Floridians evacuated, record number of evacuations. Yeah. And so I had the opportunity to chair a select committee on hurricane preparedness and, and recovery. And so evacuation routes are something that are always top of mind, especially for our friends a little further south in the Keys.
expertise. Um, but just in general, I think we, we need to reevaluate kind of what are the areas of focus and what do we need to make sure that not only policy, but budget is, is linked and matches the, the priorities of this administration and really what we see as the future. And I think to your point, 43% of Floridians, I'm sure if you pull that and, and uh, maybe about a year's time, we'll be approaching 50%. Yeah. yeah. Well, Lieutenant Governor, what gives you hope? What gives me hope? Well, I, I think really the amount of awareness and education and just um, how this has become a stream of consciousness for Floridians. Um, I think people at one point, you know, saw that environment and the economy may be at odds. And I think that people are really starting to understand that they're not at odds, that they're linked, um, that, our, that our younger generation are, are really conscious about this. I think people are making um, good decisions. And I think, it, again, it's incumbent upon those of us that are in positions to be able to um, make policy and make sure that we're funding it appropriately, that we also educate. Um, and I think that's something that obviously our schools do a good job at, but that starts at home, right? And so I think um, as you continue to look for opportunities to educate, to make sure individuals are prioritizing um, our future, I think that that's something that, that gives me hope. We, we have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. And I know oftentimes people get exasperated or frustrated because we, we haven't done this or we haven't done that. But really, it is a, a huge endeavor. And when you look at the, the inroads that we've been able to make in just a short period of time, there is hope. Um, we are focused on it. We are working on addressing everything from uh, resiliency to hardening our coastline. And I, and I really do think that um, one step at a time, but I, I do believe we're making a lot of progress. So that gives me hope for the future. Well, it's wonderful. And as a, as a Florida bomb myself, uh, you know, I, I really do see that the kids sort of leading the way on this, yeah. but we've got to We've got to be ready to serve it up to yes, them. So I appreciate I your leadership. Thank you. And I'm so grateful for you being here with us today. And look forward to continuing to work with you on the front lines of climate. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks.